Hello friends, this video on coordination compound part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's draw the geometrical and optical isomers for this particular uh, compound. CONS32Cl2EN. So let's find a coordination number for this. NS32, NS32, 2Cl2, and EN is the identity. So 2 plus 2 plus 2, 6. That is, it is octahedral. So here we have since NS3Cl2 and EN. EN has a special case actually, it needs to be bonded with Michelinie only. So let's do one thing, let's fix EN in all the case. Okay, this is it. Now we have four position remaining and we have two chlorine and two ammonia. So we can have scenarios where chlorine chlorine is at 90 degree or chlorine chlorine is at 80 degree. Same thing, ammonia, ammonia, 180 degree. So let's put this ammonia here once. The only possible option to make this ammonia in 180 degree is this option. So we'll put ammonia. And the next option we had was to put to chlorine at 180 degree. So we put a chlorine here. The only option to put a chlorine at 180 degree is the See, we can't even put ammonia here to make ammonia degree because we put here, this is blocked now. Right? So the only possible option is here. So in these case option, in these two options now, the only possible option of putting chlorine here is chlorine here, chlorine here. And in this case, the only possible option of putting the rest to ammonia is NS3 here, NS3. So these two scenarios done. Now we can have scenario where chlorine, chlorine is the 90 degree and ammonia, ammonia also 90 degree. So let's put the ammonia here. So if I put the ammonia here, what are possible options I have to put next ammonia? Here or here? Two possible options. So let put, me put ammonia here. And let me put ammonia here. And let's see if I put ammonia here, this is a different case or not. In both cases, let me put the remaining chlorine. And now let's check that. See, these two are different, we know. This is also different. Let's check if these two are different. If not, we'll cancel one of these. So we view from this angle, let's suppose both the scenarios. Then at this point, on the top you have ammonia, on the top you have ammonia, correct. Here on the left you have ammonia and right you have chlorine. Here you have, on the left you have chlorine, right you have ammonia, different. On the bottom is all same, top and bottom. From here if you view, both these. Right? View from both these sides, you will see on the top you have ammonia in both cases, correct. Bottom we have chlorine, both case correct. But here if you see in the left you have ammonia, right you have chlorine. Here you have left chlorine, right ammonia, they are different. They are different, they are not same. Correct? They are not same. That means they are also geometrical isomers. So we have four geometrical isomers. For optical isomers, very simply, draw the mirror image. If you see optical, for all these, draw the mirror image. If the mirror image is not superimposable, they are optically active. For example, in this case, let's try. We get NS3 here, we get NS3 here, EN bond will be together. We have CL here. So. Are they superimposable? No, they are optical. Same thing here. We have CL here, we have CL here, there will be NS3 here, there will be NS3 here, and there will be EN bond here. Are they optically active? No. Yes. Why? Yes, because they are not superimposable, they're optically active. Same thing we apply here. Draw a mirror image. And this three, and this CL, and then these two EN one will come here, and this NS three will come here, and this CL. Are they uh, superimposable? No. Actually, even if you flip it, you get something else. You won't get this, right? You you can't superimpose. Even if you rotate this, you're not able to superimpose on this. So they also optical. Same thing here also if you draw mirror image, you will see that NS3, CL, this is EN, CL, this is NS3. Are they superimposable? You will see it is not superimposable. So they are also optical. So there are four optical isomers, pairs, and they are four geometrical isomers for this compound. Okay. 
write all the geometrical isomers of this and how many of these exhibit optical isomers. So we have PT, platinum, PT centrum atom, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, we have coordination number. Coordination number 4, either it is uh, tetrahedral or we have square. Okay. I think based on the crystal plane theory, you'll find it is at least square planar, so I do square planar, you can find that. Now, I have platinum in the center. Let's see how many possibilities. So, I have four different options and I have to put this into four different points. So, this is a math question at least. You have four different people and you have to put around the round circle. Right? Four different people put in the round circle and the order doesn't matter. So, the formula says it is n minus 1 by 2 theta n. That is the formula. If you have to put four different people in the round conference, and the order doesn't matter, clockwise, anti-clockwise. So, put there are four different values, 4 minus 1. That will be 2, this 3 into 2 into 1. 3 factorial, right? Two. You get the value of 3. That means three possible options are there. Math has helped me to solve this question. So let's put the three values. Okay. Let's start with ammonia. So let's put ammonia every in all the case here. First position. See in maths also what you will do is if you put this, give this value A, B, C, D, let's suppose, right? You will put A first everywhere. Then you will try to put B first, D. And this you will put C D and this you will put D C. Third option, what you will do is you can't take A C because C. A, B you can't take, right? So you can take AC or AD. So if you take, let's suppose AC, and let's suppose AD, right? There are two possible options. If you take AC, you can't take DB in this fashion. So you have to take BD. Or if you take AD, you can't take CB, you have to take BC. So let's see if there is a duplicate in this. So you are starting with A, B, C, D. These two are same. These two, let's see if there is a duplicate somewhere. A, C, these two are same. A, C, D, B. These two are different. A, D, C, B. A, D, C. So, as per math, there has to be one duplicate. So let, let's assume this is duplicate. These two are not duplicate for sure. Out of these, there will be one duplicate. Let's try this. A, B, B, C, are you getting anywhere? anywhere? A, B, B, C, no. A, D, B, C, no. A, B, B, C, no. Let A, D, B. Are we getting right? A, D, then B, C, right? These two are same. So we'll remove one. These two are same actually. We'll remove one. So we've got three different combinations. So let's put the value. A is what? Ammonia. So we put ammonia first everywhere. The second is B. B is what? Here. Bromine. So in two place we'll put bromine first. In third place we'll put C first, C is chlorine. And then we have C D D chlorine. Third will be in this case it will be C. C is what chlorine. And then D this P Y. This is the first. Second one A D A D C D. A is ammonia, B is bromine, and then D is P Y and C is chlorine. And then in third case it is A. C, B, D. A is ammonia, then C is chlorine, then B and D. B is bromine, and D is P, Y. So we have all these now. Okay, these are the four possible geometric isomers. The question says aqueous copper sulfate solution is blue in color. This gives green precipitate aqueous potassium fluoride and a bright green solution with aqueous potassium chloride. Explain this experimentally. So I have aqueous copper sulfate solution. So let's take copper sulfate solution. This is blue. Right? And this is aqueous it's water. Reaction happens and you get Cu H2O. Or you 
completely digested. This actually, if you see, this is the water is a ligand here. So here, here there is no ligand. This is colorless. This becomes color. This gives blue color. Okay. So please note, copper sulfate is colorless. When you put in water it becomes aqueous, you get this ligand, this complex coordination compound. Since there is a complex coordination compound, there is a degenerate d orbitals, d transition happens and this is color. Now on these, there are two options. In one case, it gives green precipitate with aqueous potassium fluoride. So potassium fluoride, if you add, it gives a green color precipitate. And a bright green precipitate with aqueous potassium fluoride. When you add KCl, you get bright green. The question is why this happens. So let's see the first reaction. The first reaction is CuH2O4, 2 plus ions, I can say, because the moment you put in water, this becomes 2 plus and SO4 2 minus ions. Okay. And with this, when you react some chlorines, what you get is CuFO. This fluorine is a stronger ligand in water, more basic than water. It replaces the water molecule and you get this plus 4 water. And this is green in color. When you add KCl to this, when you add KCl to this ions, here chlorine will replace water. And water molecule will come out. And this is bright green. Why there is a difference in color? Because these two have different power, right? So one is more strong field ligating, uh, ligating agent, one is a little weaker. So the, the power to, to create uh, degenerate orbitals is different, right? One in one case, the delta it will be T. Okay? So this is the tetrahedral. So delta T will be more in one case, the delta T will be less. And because of this, the color will change. This also the color is different because here is a weak ligand, the delta T is very less. And these two also, the delta T is different. And so they have different color. So the color is, in, in, you see in all these cases, you have proper two ions. But again, the delta T value is different, right? It will be different in all these three cases. Maybe, right? In one case it is like this, one case this is more, one case is all the more. So based on the value of delta T, the wavelength of the light absorb, absorb is different and thus the color of the coordination compound is different. Okay. What is the coordination entity form when excess KCN is added to aqueous solution of copper sulfate solution? So you have copper sulfate and you add KCN. Excess. So with this, what you get is K2 Cu C4 plus K2 H2. This is very stable. Okay, this is the coordination entity form. Okay, why it is that no precipitate of copper sulfide is obtained when H2S is passed to this solution? So in this, if you pass H2S. So typically, the sulfate ions, right, should actually pull out uh, these copper ions, but these copper ions are not free, right? Because this copper is part of the coordination complex. You put H2S with something, so you get copper sulfate, so you, sorry, c 2 s and that is uh, that precipitates out. But in this case, the copper is not free. Copper is part of this coordination complex. Since it is part of coordination complex, this whole thing will not dissociate. It may dissociate into K plus and CuCN4 minus ions, minus 2 ions, but this whole complex coordination entity will not disassociate. This does not ionize. So, when H2S is added, nothing will be precipitated. Right? Copper sulfide is not precipitated in that case. Okay. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attend free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.